Hey, it's Chris Leisure Games. So this is gonna be an interesting topic. This is gonna be a little bit divisive, but this is in follow-up to the conversation about Gen Con, right? And coming from Gen Con also, you know, the hype video, videos you need to know, games you need to know, everything that's hot, everything that's... You know what? What's really interesting to me, in follow-up also from my video last week, talking about the increasing rise in price on crowdfunding and the hype that comes along with that, right? Let's talk about hype from a different aspect, right? Let's talk about social media and the hype that comes from social media. If you're not familiar, if you're not on any of those things, this is not going to really apply to you. But if you're like me and you're on a couple of these various whatevers, Reddit, Facebook, Board Game Geek, even a little bit less so in that sense. That's a whole nother rant in video that we're going to get into later, but also things like Twitter. <sighs> What we are seeing now lately is a creation of FOMO in a different way. Hear me out on this one, right? I've talked about the price points and the bubbles that are being affected and the inflation that's coming artificially because of over deluxification and unnecessary component upgrades, right? And, you know, it's going to be a trend and it's going to be a thing that's going to go and we're going to see what happens and how it evolves as the price point rises and whether or not people are going to play with their wallets in that way. And what I'm talking about here is the ubiquitous term of the hall. Not H-A-L-L, but H-A-U-L. And why am I talking about that right now? Well, that's because literally your social media, if you have anything like me that's even remotely close, is just gobsmacked packed with people posting their hauls, which is very interesting, right? And I'm going to divide this into two sections. The first part here, I'm going to talk about it because this was sort of a divisive thing on Twitter and on Facebook and people commenting back and forth on both sides. And it's just an interesting topic and I don't really know where I fall on it, right? You know me, I have a channel now, so uh, people send me stuff to talk about, right? But I don't really, you know, do the social media thing and say, look what they sent me. Here's 17 different games and here you go. You know, it's just, it, it's not me. But, you know, I see that occasionally on social media. But what's even happening more at these conventions is you have uh, creators, media folks that were or have been posting pictures of their games. And so the divisive issue that came along with this was other people saying, hey, I know you're a media person. How many of those did you actually pay for? And how many of those were gifted to you from a media standpoint, a creation standpoint, a content making standpoint? And <laughs> as you can imagine... Things got a little bit, well, you know, no, things don't get heated on the social media. What are you talking about? They got a little heated. So, you know, take that for what you will, because people were very divisive, right? You should be disclosing which ones are the ones you paid for and which ones you got for free. Saying free like it's a four letter something else, if you know what I mean. And that was the issue, right? People getting up in arms about it, and then people getting up in arms on the other side of things saying, I shouldn't have to tell you that. That's not a big deal. Who cares? Why do you care what I get for free or not? Shouldn't you just be happy? I mean, and, and so both sides kind of going back and forth. That was element number one. Now, how does that tie into my other video? How does that tie into the because, I mean, ultimately, you're talking about this either way, right? Like, I think that's what it comes down to, right? Uh, people look at it and go, I had to pay money for that, so you have to pay money for that, so I'm upset. No, no commentary otherwise, just pointing out a topic that is there. As someone who is literally... Maybe not literally. No, that's the wrong term. I am not literally. Metaphorically straddling that fence as a person who has stuff and gets stuff. Although the majority of this stuff is behind me is paid for stuff. I'm not really, I'm not really as good about that, you know? Anyway, the second point here, the second point 
<laughs> second point as he flicks up three fingers, grr, is that it's very interesting. And I want to show you some pictures and just show you instead of just tell you from that aspect, right? So for transparency's sake, I went on Twitter, I went on Facebook, and I found pictures of people's halls. So this is not like nefarious. I literally just typed those words into the searches and just I'm showing you what has popped up, right? This is this is relatively reasonable, right? You've got, uh, what is this, like half a dozen games or so, and you know, just over. And you're probably talking, I don't know, maybe 120-ish dollars. I, I would just guess. I don't really know what wormholes and parks and mariposas are, are going for to retail. But, you know, if you say 30 bucks each, let's say $130, you know, ish, right? That's not, that's not too bad. That's not... Chris, I went to a convention, I spent $130. You know, you said you go to a casino and spend $130, you'd be happy only spending that when you left, right? So that's not too big a deal. Not too big a deal whatsoever. I'm, you know, I'm not gonna, and then, you know, similarly with this, right? You have uh, Mythic Mischief and Ahoy uh, and a couple of other things that I can't really make out here, but you know, again, probably very similar price-wise. I have no idea what Ahoy or Mythic Mischief were selling for there at the convention, so let's just ballpark it about the same, right? Again, very reasonable, $130. If you said, and this is where I'm going with this, if you said you were gonna pay $130 on crowdfunding right now for a game or two, even a game, right? You'd be like, okay, 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 okay. That's not horrible. That's not horrible. That's not horrible. Um, you know, that's a lot of money, but it's it's reasonable. And you go, okay, I get this much for this much, and you know, I'm willing to spend this much. And you know, oh, all these people are on crowdfunding, spending all sorts of money, right? You've got people that are backing like a, a dozen projects a month, or you've got the, the campaigns right now running for Dead Reckoning and Foundations of Rome, and you just had Burn Cycle, and you've got all of these big, you know, two, three hundred dollar pledges that you're looking at, right? Or or the big one, Marvel Zombies. Boy, that was irritating. Boy, was that a lot of money. That was like $600, Chris. $600, Chris. Can you... Oh. <laughs> oh, wait a second. $600. Now, that was one game, but... How much money do you think this cost? But if you're like me and you're, you know... I'm Dutch, right? So I'm cheap. Frugal is what we like to call ourselves, but I'm also cheap. I'm... Anyway, that's a whole nother side note. My wife and I are yin and yang, so we balance out nicely in that aspect. That's a side tangent. But how much money do you think went into this picture? Because the other aspect is that convention games, convention games usually are sold higher than what the online sellers are selling for, right? So if I pull up my card house inventory right now, my card house page, where I just loaded a bunch of stuff in my cart earlier today, just to ballpark what like a hundred to two hundred dollars was gonna get me. I just kind of wanted to see a couple Marvel Champions things, Guild of Merchant Explorers, Bullet Star, you know, a, a few things along those lines to see what it looked like. And just from doing that, let's say 20 to 30 dollars for every single one of these games, right? And you know, I guarantee you, Ten Penny Parks, Train Topia, Decorum, uh, Yak, and uh, Wonderful Kingdom are all going to be much more than thirty dollars. It's going to balance out with some of this other stuff, right? Marvel Remix is only going to be fifteen. Some of the exits are going to be fifteen. But you know, maybe that fifteen dollar game is twenty dollars at the convention instead. I don't really know. But uh, from my ex limited experience, that tends to be the case because you're paying, you know, the publisher. So, how many hundreds of dollars do you think you're talking here? Four hundred dollars, maybe. Just throwing that out there, right? And you know, and you're saying, well, Chris, that is clearly you're clearly cherry picking, right? You're clearly um, okay. That's a fair amount of games there too. That's a that uh, Chris. It's still that's two pictures out of um. Oh, <laughs> this is also a Gen Con haul. Uh, I love Dragon's Tomb. Thank you, Dragon's Tomb. I I love this. This was his Gen Con haul picture. Anyway, <laughs> I saw this on Twitter and I couldn't resist. Anyway. Uh, here you go. Here's another one, right? How many hundreds of dollars were sent this? Midara will probably run 150 at the convention. Let alone all the Pathfinder stuff. You're probably talking another hundred of the Pathfinder. Uh, Galaxy Trucker probably at maybe almost close to another hundred there. And that's a couple hundred dollars easily without counting all the other stuff, right? I'm sure these stuffies, as my kids call them, plushies, whatever you stuffed animals, whatever you want to say, were probably 20 or $30 each. This is slightly less. Slightly less. Oh man, they have block and key? I don't have my copy of block and key yet. Oh, evergreen, I wanna get that. Anyway, but I mean, same thing, right? Same thing. 
Here's another one, probably a couple hundred dollars. Here's another one, probably closer to, you know, three, four-ish at least if I had to guess right here. So this is just a smattering, and this is even more. I mean, this is probably $500, $600 if I had to guess. This is, this is just a small sample size of me typing in stuff into search engines, folks. You know, one thing I will say, though, is it's nice to see some of these pictures, right? Because at least you see a little bit new of what's out there and, you know, what other people are excited for. Because sometimes you see things that you're not familiar with. And so you go, oh, wow, that looks really interesting. Or, whoa, that looks kind of like something I would like. But at the same time, it's really pushing consumerism as the main focus of these conventions. It also creates this artificial atmosphere that's around these posts of, you know, I, maybe I'm lesser or I didn't get enough or enough of the right hot games, right? Especially from my side of things as, you know, again, this split between a creator and a just a regular person in the hobby, right? You know, I constantly feel like, okay, well, this person just got five games or 10 games, or this whole picture was of review stuff that I missed because I just can't afford to take time off from my regular job to get all of this stuff. Because, right, it's all about the hotness. The bottom line of it, when it comes down to it, unfortunately, I like or prefer to give the benefit of the doubt when it comes to this stuff, but it unfortunately appears... And to quote someone else, these photos tend to have a particular flair to them of look at me, look how important I am, or top this. Not just a purely this is what I am excited about and I'm showing you what I'm excited about. Because again, it blurs that line, especially when you don't disclose what you got for free and what you bought, the excitement level between those, right? Because those are definitely not the same always. What you get, would you have paid for it in the first place? That is a very, very tricky subject. So that's where I'm going with this, right? Is the dichotomy there. Willingness to spend that much on that many games, is that really any different than crowdfunding? Is that better than crowdfunding spending? If I spent, if I told you I spent $500 on crowdfunding this month, you know, and I, if I told you I spent $500 at Gen Con, why are those things viewed differently? Because, you know, especially with some of the Gen Con stuff, right? It's very akin to the crowdfunding. And I've made this argument elsewhere, but I haven't presented it in a while, so maybe you're going to hear this for the first time. On crowdfunding, I read the rule book, I watch somebody else play it, I see everything that goes into it. Now I'm going to have to pay shipping. That's a con. But how many of these games have you played? How many of these games have you read the rule book for in those, you know, massive halls, right? And now, granted, probably some of them are older, like I said, with some of the you know stuff that's come out. But there's a lot of new titles in a lot of those things. And that's also the reason, <laughs> this ties into the other video that I'll talk about later, a lot of them end up on the secondary market shortly after. You know, the ubiquitous, the inevitable post-Gen Con auctions that always end up on Board Game Geek, right? A week to two weeks after Gen Con or one of these major conventions, uh, you know, Essen was another big one. They grab all these games and then they sell them because they play them once or twice and they go, well, this wasn't any good. How is that different than crowdfunding? And at least with crowdfunding, you're like, oh, I have one game that I bought for that amount and I can sell it. With this, you know, what exclusives are you getting that's gonna hold its value? Otherwise, are you gonna lose five or $10 on every single one of these games that you bought that you didn't like? You know, at least with some of the crowdfunding games, right, I can somewhat maybe break even. It's a little harder when you get them retail. And it's really hard when you've got all this. And do you have the room for all of this? This is no different than a crowdfunding game with three boxes from Simon that all have miniatures in it, right? I'm looking at my stack of Marvel United. Do you have space for all that? You saw some of those calyxes in the back of those pictures, right? They don't have space for that, at least in the picture, you know. So is it really any different? Why, why is one viewed so differently in our community than the other? Because a lot of these pictures also are very much get the hotness, get the hype, get the FOMO. You noticed a couple copies of Ahoy in there. 
Um, you know, Twilight Inscription was the other big one. Evergreen that I mentioned in that picture, right? Games that were being sold in very limited quantities. Very limited quantities. Months in advance of the retail. Does that sound like anything else that you've heard of? Crowdfunding games maybe that, um, you know, use that as one of their incentives to back it on crowdfunding? You're going to get it a couple months earlier. Right? I mean, I look at those halls and I can't help but go back to my other video and just go, this is behavior that is being normalized. This is behavior that is being recognized and it's being taken advantage of, right? FOMO first. There's nothing special about these games, right? The majority of them. The new ones especially, right? You want it first. And you're willing to pay a premium. Does that sound like anything else that I've mentioned previously? You gotta be first or you're last, right? Hmm? 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 Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've had this topic, I've brought it up in years past in random places before I even had this channel. Like, this is such a huge trend. And it speaks to the FOMO collecting nature of our hobby rather than the buying it to play it and love it aspect of our hobby. And that's what keeps things going and expanding but that's also what keeps us sort of limited and fomoing so it's a huge double-edged sword it's just something i wanted to talk about too because i also don't see anyone else talking about this and so i like doing things like that i like talking about topics that other people don't because this isn't a popular topic to talk about, right? What's t popular for me to talk about is, what games did I get this month? What games did I back? I backed a ton. Let's talk about all of them. I got them all, right? That's, that's you know, what people want me to talk about at times. You know? Or, you know, the comparison to your neighbor down the road, right? Well, they backed more than I did, so I comparatively am not doing bad, right? I didn't back that many games or pick up that many games from Gen Con, right? So I must not be as bad. Comparisons. The thieves of joy, right? Be happy with what you have. Play what you have. You don't need them all. I would love to have some of those games. It's not in the cards. I'm okay with that. But the real question you have to ask yourself, are you? And can you be happy without that, with what you have? Food for thought. Rambled way too long here at the end. That's all I got. Stay classy. See you around. Thanks for tuning in. Sub if you want. Help me out in any way you choose. I love you guys. See you around. Peace out.